So in this video, I'm going through grade eight and quiz two. And question one gives you a calculation. This is the question. And it's telling you that the final answer is 0 0.72. Now, the first thing I would do is I would get my calculator and I would do the original calculator calculation 0 0.06 times 1.2 and SD button, and the actual answer is 0 0.0, so 0 0.072. So that's wrong. What has happened? Well, the first step is correct. I get rid of the decimals, and I do the calculation 6 times 12. You may want to check uh, that the first calculation is correct. But then you don't want 0 0.72, so it's not a divide by 100. You want three digits after the decimal. Why is that? Because there is one, two, three digits after the decimal in the question. That's one decimal, that's the other decimal, and we simply um, count them. So what has happened is we should have divided not by 100, but by a thousand. So to get your one mark, you say um, he should have divided by a thousand. That's all. Question two says fill in the blank. Something divided uh, by negative six is the same as um, 0 0.48 divided by uh, negative 0 0.6. So if it's the same as this, let's actually find out what the value of this is. So 0 0.48 divided by negative 0 0.6 and it gives me negative 0 0.8. So I want something divided by negative 6 to give me the same, to give me equal to that. So I really want to do um, the opposite. It's a division. Something divided by negative 6 gives me, so something, question mark, divided by negative 6 gives me, um, negative 0 0.8. How do you reverse a division? You reverse it by multiplication. So let's multiply them both times negative 6 gives me 4.8. So let's put 4.8 here and then let's check, always check that you've done the right thing. 4.8 divided by negative 6 and it gives you negative 0 0.8. This one says write down the percentage multiplier increase um, to increase a price by 47%. Well the multiplier is the number you multiply by and for an increase you do 100 plus 47, you press equals on your calculator, and you get 147, and then you divide again by 100, and you get 1.47. That's the multiplier. And it says write down the percentage multiplier for a decrease of 21%. So you would do 100 minus 21, which is 79, so you press equals, you get 79, then you do divided by 100, which is 0 0.79. And question five says, Claudia invests 25,000 at a rate of 2% per year compound interest. Calculate the total amount she will have earned after five years. Well, compound interest is an increase so the first thing I'm going to do is 100% plus 2, 100 plus 2, which is 102, divided by 100, which is 1.02. Because of this 5, there's going to be a power of 2, a power of 5 there. 
and then I'm going to do my multiplication. So 25,000 times 1.02 to the power of 5, and it says to the nearest penny. So I have 25,000 times 1.02 to the power of 5 equals, and I have got, you have to give it to two decimal places because um, money is given to two decimal places. Two, seven, what was it? Uh, six, zero, two, point zero, two. Um, because after the two, you have a zero, zero doesn't round up. So the two stays the same. This says Mali scooter depreciates, decreases. So it's a decrease in value, it's going down by 24% in the first two years. In all further years, her scooter depreciated by 13% of its previous year's value. She originally paid 850 for her scooter. Calculate the value of Molly's scooter after five years. So everything's going down. So I need 100% minus 24, which is 76 divided by 100 which is 0 0.76. And then the next one is a, a decrease of 13%. So that's 100 minus 13, um, which is 87, divided by 100, 0 0.87. Now, the 24% decrease was decreased for two years, so you're going to put the two there. It's a power of two. And then in all other years, and it's um, a five-year period, the first two are here, and then there's another three because that makes five years. So the first two years, it decreases by 24%. Every other year, it decreases by 13%. And now we do our multiplication, 850 times 0 0.76 squared times 0 0.87 cubed. And you put it into your calculator, 850 times 0 0.76 squared times 0 0.87 cubed. And... That's 323 point, and it's 298. This 8 rounds the 9 up, so instead of 29, I have a 30. 323.30. And again, give money to two decimal places. A suitcase weighs 23 ki kilograms, correct to the nearest kilogram. So that is to the nearest one. Write down the smallest possible weight and the largest possible weight. So this is about pounds. And your step one is always to divide your rounding unit by two. And then you add and subtract. Um, the smallest is here. And the highest is here. So it's 23 minus 0 0.5, which is 22.5. And this is 23 plus 0 0.5, which is 23.5. And then this one says the length A of a pencil is 15.3 centimeters, correct to one decimal place. State the error interval for the length of the pencil. Well, again, that's about bounds, and you put the lowest bound here and the highest, uh, well, the lower bound and the upper bound here. So for one decimal place, you do 15.3, and you add a zero. And then you focus on the last two digits. Remember that the pink digits, they stay the same, only uh, the last two digits change. So this is 30, 30 is a 10, so it's always 10 divided by 2, which is 5. So the lower bound is 30 minus 5, 
which is 20 pi. And the upper bound is 30 plus 5, which is 35. So the 15 is going to stay the same, 15.25, only that yellow part changes. And 15.35, and it's only the yellow part that changes everything before the last two digits stays the same. And we come to solving equations. X is only on one side, so we start with the number and we do the opposite because it's a um, plus 5. I do minus 5. 4x, that is 0, equals 30. And I'm dividing by 4, dividing by 4, and 30 is not part of the 4 times table. So 30 divided by 4, you can leave it as a fraction. 15 over 2 or 7.5, both are the same, both are equal. And this is an equation, but before we can solve the equation, we must expand, we must multiply out the bracket. So this is p plus 15 equals 2 times 4p is 8p, 2 times negative 3, negative 6. And because p appears twice, I'm going to start by reversing the smaller p. The smaller p is the 1p. So minus 1p, minus 1p, that disappears. I have 15 equals 7p minus 6. Remember, p or the letter x wants to be on its own. So I have to move the minus 6. Plus 6, plus 6. This gives 21. This disappears. Equals 7p. Now I divide by 7 and divide by 7. So p equals 3. This is an equation um, with a fraction. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply by 4 because the fraction is a division and I need to reverse the division by multiplication. So you're going to multiply everything by 4. 4 times x, 4 times 5 and you keep the top the same. 29 minus x equals 4x plus 20. The trick here is to multiply everything by 4, not just the x. And I always start by reversing the smaller x, the smaller letter. This is the smaller x, it's a negative x. So I do the opposite and I'm going to add x to both sides. So I now have 29 equals 5x plus 20. Remember x wants to be alone, so I'm going to take away the 20 take away the 20. So I now have 5x equals 9 and 9 is not in the 5 times table so 9 divided by 5 you can leave it as a fraction or as a decimal divided by 5 divided by 5 x equals 9 fifths. And now we come to inequalities. And because n appears on both sides, I'm going to start by reversing the smaller n. So I'm going to add n and add n. Remember to keep the sign exactly the same way. This disappears. I have a 12, 5n minus 3. n, the letter, wants to be alone. So I'm going to add 3 and add 3. So I now have 15 is bigger than 5n divided by 5 divided by 5. This gives me 3 is bigger 
than n or n is smaller than 3. So you can write it like this or you can write it like that. n is smaller than 3. Both of these are correct. For question 13, you have two inequality signs. Keep them always the same and start from the middle. So I'm going to add one and whatever you do, you do it to every single part. Add one, add one, add one. So this will give me 2x because this will disappear. 7 add 1 is 8. Be careful. Negative 6 add 1 if you're not sure, then put it in your calculator. Negative 6 add 1, negative 5. So negative 5. And then I'm going to divide by 2 and whatever I do, I have to do it everywhere. So this is x, I keep my signs the same, 8 divided by 2 is 4, negative 5 divided by 2, again, is not in the 2 times table, so you can leave it as a fraction or you can um, give it as a decimal. That's your answer. Okay. And again, this says solve the inequality. Um, I'm going to start by reversing x, so plus 2x plus 2x. 3 plus 2x. And I know that x wants to be, what I've done here is I've uh, got the x to be positive, which is what I want. I always want x to be positive. And then I'm going to take away 3, take away 3, because now x wants to be on its own, now that it's positive. So I have 2x is greater than 6. I divided by 2, I divided by 2, x is bigger than 3, or you can write it as x is smaller, um, sorry, x is bigger than 3. So you can write it like this, x is bigger than 3, or like that, x is bigger than 3. And this one says, show your solution on a number line. So the first thing you need to do is actually um, answer it. So I'm going to add 5, add 5. 3x is bigger than or equal to 15. I divide by 3. I divide by 3. x is bigger than or equal to 5. Because of this equal in the inequality, your circle has to be shaded in. And you have to start with 5. So you start up here. That's the 5. And you shade your circle in. And it says x is bigger than or equal to 5. So you have to put an arrow that is going um, towards 6 and 7. It doesn't matter how long the arrow is, but it has to be pointing in the direction that is bigger than 5. And this says, write the um, inequality. So I literally write down negative 3 and 1. I put x in the middle, I put my signs, because this is shaded in, that one has to have an equal sign, and literally this is your answer. x is bigger than or equal to negative 3, but smaller than 3. Now, this is uh, simultaneous equations, and this is simultaneous equations 1. They both equal y, therefore they both equal to each other. So you put 6x minus 4 equals 4x plus 1. And then you solve it like a normal equation. You start with the smaller x, minus 4x minus 4x. 2x minus 4 equals 1. I'm going to add 4. I'm going to add 4. So this is 2x equals 5. So x equals 2.5. But of course, I don't just want x, I want y. 
So I'm going to choose this one, y equals 4 times x, x becomes a bracket, plus 1. And you get your calculator and you put 4 brackets, 2.5 plus 1, and it gives you 11. So x equals 2.5, y equals 11. And then we have more simultaneous equations. I can get rid of y because of the 2y and negative 2y. They're the same digit, but it's not the same sign. Same sign subtract, they're not the same sign. So I'm going to add, and I'm getting rid of y. 7x plus 5x is 12x. 16 plus 20 is 36. Divided by 12, divided by 12, x equals 3. I found x, I need to find y. I'm going to choose the equation that doesn't have a minus. 7 brackets 3 plus 2y equals 16. 7 times 3 is 21 plus 2y equals 16. Remember why the letter wants to be alone. 20 minus 21 minus 21. So this is 2y minus uh, and it's going to be negative 5. Again, if you're not sure, be careful. It's 16 minus 21, not 21 minus 16. So it's going to be a negative 5. Divided by 2, divided by 2, y equals, um, we said, negative 2.5. Or negative 5 over 2, you can leave it as a fraction. So here's your two answers, x and y. Now we come to angle properties. Angles on a straight line add up to 180. So this is 180 minus 119, and you'd get your calculator, and you would put it in 180 minus 119, 61, 61. That's angles around a point. Here's the point. And this angle here is 90. Angles around a point add up to 360. So 360 minus 90 minus 58. And again, you would get your calculator and you'd put it in. 360 minus 90 minus 58, 212. Angles in triangle add up to 180. 180 minus 100 minus 37. And you get your calculator and you do it. 180 minus 100 minus 37. 43 degrees. Angles in a quadrilateral, a four-sided shape. They add up to 360, so 360 minus 96 minus 128 minus 61. 360 minus 96 minus 128 minus 61. 75. And it says, Write down the value of W and give a reason. Well, look, these are vertically opposite angles or just opposite angles. And opposite angles are equal. So W is 40. Why? Because opposite angles are equal. And then it says, work out the value of x and work out the value of y. Well, look at this. This tells you that this is 90 degrees. Well, it means that the next one is also 90 degrees. This one 
is also 90 degrees because these are angles on a straight line. So if this one is 90 degrees and this is already 80 out of the 90, all you need to do, that's a right angle, is um, 90 minus 80, which is 10 degrees. And then it says work out the value of y. Well, y is part of the triangle. And angles on a triangle add up to 180. So that's 180 minus 80, um, which is 100 minus 40, which is 60. You can put it onto your calculator and you would get 60 degrees. And this is the end of quiz two.